the workshop to order on Thursday, April 13th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Mm. Roll call. I uh, are present, Melinda Sabrowski. <laughs> Charlene Diaz here. Fred Rushton here. Barbara Zarzicki here. We have a ghost member, but we'll fill that tonight, maybe. Thank you very much. Um, DC, New York trip. Is there anybody here that wants to talk to that? Would you please <laughs> come on up here and introduce yourself and talk to us about it? Good evening. Uh, my name is William Tafoya. I'm the attendance clerk at Bullhead City Middle School. And uh, this past March, we had the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. and New York with 17 of our Bullhead Middle School students and um, eight adults, including myself, um, by plane, by subway, by bus, <laughs> all through New York and Washington, D.C. It was a fabulous experience that I want to thank um, everyone here for and uh, just for um, having that opportunity um, to be able to take place and uh, for allowing our students to have that wonderful experience and you know have have it be something uh, that they'll remember because uh, I know I will remember it uh, for a very long time. Well tell us a story. <laughs> There's got to be stories. Um, one that I would really love to eventually forget is our <laughs> lovely duration on the subway and I was um, actually just talking about it but um, I was very nervous going in, going into the subway knowing that we would be in the subway because I had traveled to New York with my family previously and the uh, um, tour guide assured me you know we have and he explained to myself and the other tour um, tour group that was with us their leader he explained to her and I the um, his thoughts on it and we all agreed that I would be in the very back of the group and the other tour um, leader would be in the middle of the group and he would be at the very front and he had a flute with him uh, and he'd play a little tune and we'd all quack on the subway and know that it was time to get off. Um, but it's, I was still very nervous to have 17 students of my own <laughs> along with um, the, I believe, 12 students from Mississippi that were with us um, all on a subway car together and knowing when to get off. Um, but, you know, we, we made it, we all got off, we all uh, had an awesome experience, but I, I will very happily never ride the subway again if I could avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't plan on going back to New York soon, in other words. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Um, the hotels were good for you? and They were outstanding. Um, the, uh, the students were amazing in, in terms of their behavior there. They... Um, were all very respectful of the fact. I mean, mind you, they were all very tired each and every day because it was <laughs> jam-packed from 7 a.m. till about 10, 11 um, p.m. So they were well ready to make themselves go to bed and uh, get ready for the next day. But uh, they were very respectful of each other, very respectful of um, the other guests in the hotel. And I'm very proud of, of the experience that they, um, of their performance uh, on the trip okay. as well. Did you get to go to a Broadway show? What did you get to, yes, get to did. do? We, Come uh, on. Yes, we got to see um, uh, Peter Pan Goes Wrong. And <laughs> it was in a, a hilarious performance. Mm -hmm. I, was, I walked away from that show in tears of laughter. Um, and I would definitely recommend that if you get to see it, to, to go see it, because it was outstanding. Um, from the costume changes, a uh, very small cast, but they... they made it work and they owned that stage <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, and the, the students were very respectful at the Lincoln Memorial um, in DC as well as the uh, Vietnam and uh, Korean War Memorials very um, aware of their of what was being presented to them and um, I had one student in particular who was very eager to uh, see Arlington Cemetery because he uh, had family members who were um, in service and whether they were um, buried there or not I, I'm not sure but he, he was very excited to experience that and and um, thank mm -hmm. the soldiers who, who, who did fight for our country um, who were buried there. 
That has to be very impressive. Absolutely. Um, did you guys get to go see the Statue of Liberty? Yes. Um, Was there any ooing and, and aahing about that? <laughs> the, uh, their their hopes were kind of uh, diminished in that uh, area because they they were hoping to be able to um, take a elevator ride up top, um, but they they're not allowing that very much anymore because of the um, age of the Statue of Liberty and uh, just wanting people to be careful and um, mm -hmm. safe while they're visiting Liberty Island. But they were still very impressed by the, um, the overall appearance of it and just seeing it in general was, was for some of them very, very much the highlight of their trip. Did they get to experience snow while they were back there? They didn't, uh, we didn't see any snow except maybe a little bit on, on the way from New York to D.C. Uh, or D.C. to New York um, on the side of the road, but it was, it was very minimal. Um, we did get to see the cherry blossom trees, um, okay. and that, th there were very few, but and beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Great. Wonderful. Um, Thank you so much for taking our kids. Thank you for uh, your time, and I appreciate it again. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a whole bunch of rattling going on down here. <laughs> Did you guys get a whole bunch of awards that you want to share with us? Would you guys come up and talk to us, please? Come on, you guys. We can, we're, we're into stories tonight. I'm into stories tonight. Are you guys into <laughs> stories tonight? Come on, tell us a story. Come on. Okay. Okay. Hold on. You want me to talk first? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Mrs. Martin, and I am the coach. I have the privilege of being the coach of our Science Olympiad team at Fox Creek for now our maybe six, maybe seven. I'm not sure. <laughs> and this is just half of our team this year. We were a 10-member team. Um, the other five that aren't here are, believe it or not, off playing baseball games, softball games, those kinds of things. Throughout the season, we have had basketball players and volleyball players on our team as well, and they've all split their time very well to come home with all this clankiness, and they just want to give you a little bit of insight from their season, especially their trip to the state tournament this year. Holy cow. Oh, me? We don't bite. Come on. You got two, you got two, two medals. medals, so what, yeah. what do the medals represent? Um, these are second place medals. I left some other ones at home. For the, for what? Uh, I'm pretty sure one of them was for like Green Generation, which is like an environmental science uh -huh. type of competition. And, oh, no, 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 no. One of them was for uh, building a like vehicle, like a, a, a rubber band powered vehicle. And the other one was for bioprocess lab, but like biology and science. <laughs> so you use rubber bands to power your, your car, for yeah. your vehicle? Yeah. And <coughs> release with a pencil. How many rubber bands flew across the room? Um, <laughs> while testing it, a lot because mm -hmm. couldn't get it right. But during competition, none. None. Okay. okay. So. Okay, well, thank you and congratulations. Thank wonderful, you. wonderful. And what are the trophies for? Oh. Well, we got to talk to each other. Yeah. What's this trophy for? What's the blue one? That's the North Central. This is the state one. It's what? The state one. State one. Oh, the state one. What place did you take it state? Holy cow. You won third. <laughs> third place. Okay. So, what? you've got medals around your neck, too. What do they mean? Okay, I want to say. This third place one was actually last year, and I built Mission Possible. Um, it's, like, it's like a roller coaster. Oh, where okay. there's like different, all these parts where you have to go through like the ball, the marble has to go through different like uh, um, obstacles, yes. Um, I did the same one this year where it's actually called a roller coaster, and I made a roller coaster marble going down through many obstacles as well. So you so had to build the, the roller coaster to, for the marble to go down? Yeah. yeah. Right. The marble must not be touched too, so it was really hard when we were doing testing. But we managed, I managed to win first place for this one, for roller coaster and the... Um, Can't do the power. Oh, the, the real
regionals, I also won first place. My other first place is Camp Church of Powder, and we were testing powders. We weren't supposed to like figure out the powder. We were just making in not inferences, observations. observations for it. And yeah, I have two first places. <coughs> All right, <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. All right, who else did? Who else needs to talk? Oh, look at the only guy in the group. <laughs> Oh man! So you got a whole bunch of you got a whole bunch of ribbons too. What's all this stuff? Come on, be proud. Invitationals and regionals, but um, well, two of them were for state. Mm -hmm. I don't know which ones. They don't put the. Does, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> These ones were from state. Um, this one was second place for Code Busters, which is crypto, mm -hmm. cryptography, mm -hmm. and crypto analysis, and. This one was for Cantor de Power, which was the one that she did. And this was first place in meteorology, which is all about the study of the atmosphere, the atmosphere. and weather mm -hmm. and other things. Okay, so your cryptology thing, what were you guys doing? Uh, translating? Or were you actually making up code too? Uh, no, we had a set code and we had to take a ciphertext and decode it. Oh, okay. All right. They didn't give you just a set of letters and ask you to tell them what they had said, right? Well, it gives us uh, a ciphertext, which is a message that has been encoded. And you need to decode it. It gives you the code that was used, but it doesn't give you all the information, like the key, etc. You have to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Next time I do a crossword puzzle, I'm calling you. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, though, for doing that, what you did. Thank you, you. Got, you guys need to realize she taught science, so <laughs> it takes a lot to impress her with what you're doing. This is good. Miss, Miss Zabrowski taught science. So. so who haven't I picked on? The two ladies. The two ladies over yeah. here. Let's see. What do, you, what do you got hanging around your neck? Okay. Um, I have two of these badges. Uh, these two are third places, and one of them is um, anatomy and physiology. Oh my gosh! Where um, I hated that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we did like uh, stuff about the digestive uh, system and um, immune system and respiratory system, and I got third place for that. And this first place was with Mike in the roller coaster. And this third place, I forgot where I got it. Yeah, we got. I got these two, and then this was from our North Central Regional, where we got first place. That's the team award. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Oh. All right, oh, come cool. on up here. Tell me a story. <laughs> So I only have one medal, but that's okay, because it's second place. She's going back next year. So this is from Wheeled Vehicle, which Valeria is also in. Uh huh. And it's we so we made like a vehicle out of a piece of like thin wood, and then we put what's it called? We screw like what's it called? The wall. The, the metal bits. The, yeah, axles. Starting axles. I know. I'm the. Oh, the end. The CDs. This, no, this CDs. part. The, oh, the, the center part? Yeah. Like the rubber band? No, what's it called? Oh, the, 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 the whole thing from scratch using whatever materials they can find. Um, so yeah. The part that we hit with the pencil. The the That's always so much fun. Yeah. I love to do that with kids. You know, I don't know who would be worse to have, the kids in the subway or the kid, <laughs> these kids on the bus. So. They didn't. Yeah, they were amazing. They were super easy. Oh, yeah. So I want them to tell us about uh, the um, uh, science lab that they visited outside of the Olympiad. So you oh, need I to tell these about folks this. about where you went to visit uh, outside of the Olympiad. It's also on the slideshow. Oh, okay. Well, well do the slideshow. Out of the top, 
the every event we were in the top eight in every event for each one of us. Talk about this the one. Oh, the oh, genomics. Um, uh, this is at TGen where we had our guide, Kristen Koss. Koss. Koss? Koss. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Koss. And um, she told us about like the history of TGen and what they did there and the research they did to like make cures to help other people. Um, and we did experiments up there. You can see us working on it. And it was like gel electrophoresis where we would put the genes in these different slots. It was like gel. Mm -hmm. And while we waited, we took a tour around TGen. And she showed us the different like workplaces, laboratories. <laughs> and when we came back, we could see how the genes were like similar to each other and we figured out um, oh our task was to figure out who like who murdered this one guy <laughs> and we used evidence to figure it out and we found out it was our third suspect using the gel electrophoresis I bet that was phenomenal that was phenomenal <laughs> That's really cool. Where else did we go? Butterfly land, okay. Yeah. Where else did we go, guys? The butterfly land. Ooh, I want to speak for both the butterfly land and the aquarium. <laughs> both, of those, both of those were Pull the really fun experiences, actually. Pull the microphone down to your mouth. Oh, oh, okay. Hello? Okay. Okay. Huh? Oh. So the butterfly land, we learned about the history of the butterflies. It was a calming experience since the next day was going to be a very stressful day taking all of the tests. It was calming to be in the, the place where we see the butterflies. And because each, of, each one of them, it, had, it smelled really good. It was really, <laughs> it was really nice and calming. It wasn't that stressful. We were, we were glad. We were really happy. Um, um, <laughs> We learn about what butterflies, what butterflies were before, as to being ancient species, and uh, the the migration. Yes, the the development of the butterfly species, and then the aquarium. Ooh, Ooh. this aquarium. The aquarium was really big. It was such a thrilling experience. It was so, it was exciting. Um, when we went to this bathroom, the, there, there <laughs> when we went to this bathroom, there was this, it wasn't really a mirror, but when you go to the sink where you were supposed to wash your hands, the mirror that was, it was supposed to be a mirror, it was actually a huge aquarium filled with sharks and fishes. Mm -hmm. It was... So you kind of hurried out of there, huh? <laughs> no, no, I, I actually... The bathroom was part of the uh, tour. Oh, really? You know, really so what kind, of, what kind of things did you guys get to touch? Did starfish and that stuff? Um, what, do you, what do you call yeah, it? Stingrays. Stingrays, stingrays okay. <laughs> we touched, uh, we touched um, 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 stingrays, sea urchins. I have no idea. The star? Stuff you don't starfish, get to touch. Starfish, yeah. We touched starfish. To stuff you don't get to touch in the desert, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What, what else did we do? We? We saw alligators. alligators. We saw crocodiles. We we saw different species of birds, Sh sharks and birds and scorpions and um, jellyfish. The jelly f it was called a moon jellyfish and it was really cool. I it was just it was. Was it one of the ones that kind of fluoresce? It yeah, I mean it has yes. its own little. They g they glow in the dark. Uh -huh. Yes. It was right. insanely amazing <laughs> to be at the aquarium. Time, huh? It was a memorable experience to the Science Olympia team since this will be my last year to being in the Science Olympia team and to being in America too. So. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, but you had a good time. <laughs> you got a lot of stuff rattling around your neck, and that's that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, oh. Oh, we got a couple more pictures here. We got a couple more. This is this is my page. Okay, I'm. Um, you guys kind of looking tired, a little bit tired in this picture. So you guys had a great time. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. And thank you for representing our school district and your high, and your junior high school so well. Yeah. You make us proud. And I think we have a real true science teacher here. Did you see the periodic table? And uh -huh, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I noticed. A lady after my own heart. <laughs> We're going to be Thank looking. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate it. We're going to be looking to see what you guys do in the future and following you. Congratulations. That's great. That's great. So, do we have some people here from Diamondback that want to tell us about their school improvement thing plan? Thank you so much for having us tonight. Um, thank you, Dr. Stewart and uh, President of the School Board, Ma'am Sobraski, and all the members of the School Board. Thank you so much for having us. Okay. My name is Byron Bolin. I'm the principal of Diamondback Elementary School. Margaret Imlin, assistant principal at Diamondback Elementary. Well, tonight, what we want to do. Is I think we're, we're getting close to being out of time, but I want to quickly go no, through. We've got lots of we've time. Got lots we have until 6.30. Oh, yes, ma'am. So okay. you, you can have half of the time between now and then. You bet. <laughs> so tonight what we want to do is you've heard, it, you've heard a couple of times um, from some of the other schools about uh, where they've been in the, in the general process, mm -hmm. especially as it pertains to the um, integrated action plan. Um, and you've heard from the other schools that they've had a lot of help from um, what is the name of the, the company? The instructional yes, empowerment. instructional empowerment, and they were incredibly helpful, and they gave us some really good tools. Uh, there's another thing that we're going to tell you about tonight, another piece that we had to do at our campus, and I'm going to let uh, Miss Emlyn get started telling you about what that is. So we started with what we call the TSI and the ATSI. So we just wanted to explain what those were before we got started. So the TSI um, is the targeted support. And improvement the ATSI is additional targeted support and improvement so when a school has an underperforming subgroup on all indicators the school is identified for targeted support improvement or TSI if student group performance is below the lowest 5% of <coughs> title one schools then the school is identified for additional targeted support and improvement which is the ATSI so how do we do it we like to look at the aggregated and the disaggregated data. The aggregated data equals the whole, a summary of information, and the disaggregated data are separated pieces of information that are into subsets and subgroups. So the Federal Every Student Succeed Act, which is the ASSA, they have different subgroups. The, some of the subgroups are the major racial, ethnical groups, low income students, English learners, which are EL learners, students with disabilities, commonly used super subgroups are high need and low performing students. So the two that we have at our school, I believe we're the only ones that have those, or no, we have, we're the only one with the ATSI. <coughs> So the TSI is the Hispanic Latino students, and they were just below the threshold, and the ATSI were our special education students that were below the th well below the threshold. <coughs> so how did we address the disparities for these targeted um, student populations? First, we identified the root cause, the primary need, the needs assessment, and the desired outcomes. 
We based all of the findings on information from the state test in 2021 and 2022 academic year, as well as data from the comprehensive needs assessment and the quarterly benchmark assessment. <laughs> hmm. So we had a group that volunteered themselves to come and help out. And what was great about this is it was the Friday right before spring break. So we did have a group of volunteers. And <laughs> of course we had a bribe in place and food always gets people out. And so it was great. We had a good time um, eating and, and just relaxing right before we, we started to dig in. One thing that we really picked up from instructional empowerment that was really, really powerful was a good way to establish meeting norms. And there's a lot of good ways to do that, some good stuff out there. They had a, a, a card that they used and they told us we could take a picture of it. Um, and you can see it right there, it's the multicolored, uh, the primary colors and the green. Um, and that helped us go around the table, make sure that everybody had a voice, that we could hear everybody's experience, expertise, and also their questions, which were really important. And we as you- Agreed or disagreed. Yeah, if we agreed or disagreed, and um, as you know from some of the other presentations, uh, one of those things that help you understand um, what the problem is or the root cause is asking a lot of why questions. Why is this and why? And you keep asking why until you can't ask why anymore. And the, yet you're left with the, the answer staring you right in the face. And so that's what we did for the Hispanic and Latino and we also did that for special education. So it was two different fish bones that we were working on that day. Um, but the creating the norms really helped us um, establish a consensus before moving on and before we um, were, you know, actually wrote it on the actual fish bone. So as Ms. Emlyn stated before, uh, we got to the root cause, the primary need, the need statement, and at the bottom, the desired outcome. When you get to a desired outcome, it's always based on what you want the most for student outcomes. And that's what the desired outcome really is. It's what we want and expect from uh, the students as it pertains to all of those factors that they look at, such as mainly test scores. Test scores are a really good indicator because it speaks to things like um, attendance and parent involvement and lots of indicators help out with those test scores. So in creating the need statement and finishing all the pieces of the fishbone, we were able to really dig into all of the potential causes, look a little deeper at the, um, at the test results and come up with some final results that actually ended up being on the fishbone. But the fishbone really is that thing that tells us what we need and then how are we going to get there is the next piece. So there's, that's what the fish bones are, the actual fish bones. Just glance at that, some of the things that, that we wrote. And then let's move on to the next slide. So the strategies and the action steps. The strategies and the action steps is actually the, the part that I think is, um, is the exciting part. Because this is what you put into place that help you achieve the, the outcome that you're looking for. And I wrote on there some of the things specifically that we looked for was targeted professional development and really being specific about these two areas. Um, cult creating a culturally responsive instructional practices, um, training, an actual training piece that we're going to have in place that not only we introduce in a professional development for everybody, but that the instructional coach and our instructional team can continue to reinforce as we're, as we're um, helping the teachers grow in this area. I think this might take a little time to incorporate because, but it's also, if you've ever heard of universal design, it's like that too. So let me just give you a little bit of what a culturally responsive classroom would look like. Culturally responsive classroom helps the teacher be able to access every student's background knowledge. It helps them know those students a lot better. I mean, starting with just being able to pronounce their name correctly. Um, 
that's important, you know? And um, Dale Carnegie once said in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, the sweetest sound to anyone's ear is, this, is the sound of their own name. So if you, if you don't get that right to begin with, you're already um, not incorporating a culturally responsive classroom. Um, and so that, that would be one thing. Another thing is just understanding uh, the families. What, what do they do? What are they into? And speaking of families, getting, getting to know those parents better, inviting them onto campus, having opportunities where parents can feel welcome. And so that's, those are just some of the things. It's really, it's really bridging the gap. And so there isn't anything such as um, a language barrier. I don't like that. I don't like a barrier. You know, if you think of your own kid, you don't want a barrier. You want barriers removed so that they can have access to everything that everybody else is doing. And so you use things that have been research-based to say, what works? What works out there? So a culturally responsive is just one piece. It's just one piece, and it speaks to that universal de design. And so that's, that's one example. Um, another thing is communication and collaboration for SPED. One of the things that we were able to see in, in the data that we looked at was the, the lack of communication between the gen ed teacher and the SPED teacher. And so if we can just bridge that gap and have a, have a good way for those to communicate, we're going to fix so much of the problem that exists. Even certain things like when is that student going to the resource room? Is it during core instruction? It should never be during core instruction. Those are small things. That communication between the SPED teacher and the gen ed teacher is critical. That's just one simple thing. And those are the things that we were able to do when we got together um, as this group the Friday before spring break, and we were able to just say, aha. And those ahas came about from the whys that we asked. So the last steps, I tried to make this the most boring slide with just a white <laughs> background, just to catch you off guard a little bit. Um, just like everybody else, we have to upload it into grants management. But this is actually a living document. We, can, we have our deadlines to ma meet, which help us get it done. And then we work with our awesome curriculum director. She guides us along, makes suggestions, tells us where we messed up, <laughs> and, <laughs> and tells us, um, hey, you forgot to kind of stuff. And then we go in and we tweak it. And we have our deadlines, like I said. And then from there, we start implementing the plan and the strategies and the action steps. And as, we, as they start to unfold, we're able to say, um, we need a little bit more, and we can add more. Or this, this isn't quite getting it. Let's change it a little bit. And so we'll work with our curriculum director. We'll get together as a group of instructors. And actually, it could be any group. It doesn't have to be that core, that core group that we met with. It could be any of them. And we can continue to, to change it, make tweaks, so that we actually get to the desired outcomes and what are those student outcomes and that's the heart of what we want and really to be quite honest if there's a lot of things that we can put in place that will help teachers achieve these outcomes and at the heart of it the very heart of it is just having high expectations I like to use um, just an example that I frequently share with teachers and that is athletic coaches Athletic coaches have high expectations because they want to win. They want to have good outcomes. They want to win and have good outcomes. Choir teachers are the same thing, any kind of music teacher. You don't want the one kid not sounding good because it's like the missing light on the marquee. <laughs> so a choir teacher, like an athletic coach, is going to work hard and do drills and focus on that, that um, player, focus on that student who's standing out like a missing light on a marquee and surround them with the opportunities they need to grow so that they can be up to speed so that they can play having a deep bench when you're when you have a basketball team is awesome because your your players get fatigued and you need to be able to have them everybody counts same with a choir you need everybody having the right vowel shapes and singing with the right diction and knowing all the words the simple <laughs> things 
And so in the classroom, the same thing. You don't want the kid that you say, well, they just moved here. Well, they don't speak any English at all, so we're just going to, you know, they're, they're catching up to speed. No, those are the barriers that we want to knock down and destroy. And so culturally responsive classroom says that we're going to have the same high expectations for every student that walks through this door, that walks onto campus. Every student has high expectations. And so that's the spirit and the, the, the meat of everything that we want to do. And we have to write a plan. And like I said, if the plan doesn't quite work, we can tweak it. And it's an, it was an awesome process. And um, before we end, we'd like to thank you for letting us come up here and explain that and then also give you a chance to ask any questions that you might have. Madam President, if I may. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Bowen, I was uh, privileged, as were several members here, to attend the uh, sit-in and, and visit some of the classes on March 10th. And I have to say that I was quite impressed with um, the number of teachers who are willing to at their own expense give up their day <laughs> and I know that days off are precious for teachers they really are um, and it was very very impressive and sir I would like to commend you for your passion and for uh, what you guys have taken from the fish bones and I see great things happening at Diamondback because of what you all as a team are doing and I thank you very much for taking such good care of our kids a lot thank you so much mm -hmm. for that okay I've asked for a story from everybody now tell me <laughs> tell me a story about a teacher who had a light come on had an eureka moment okay. was there any were there any moments when teachers just had when we were working on this mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah so tell um, me a story a story <laughs> Let me just share, since we're talking about the TSI and ATSI, mm -hmm. when we met that Friday, um, when, we were, when we were looking at the, the, the test scores mm -hmm. and we were speaking about the Hispanic Latino, um, that's where we came up with the culturally responsive. Because we were talking about how do we, how do we, get, how do we get to those kids? Because we do have one student on campus, a third grade student, a girl, who recently moved in, family just from Mexico, and they speak zero English, the whole family. Um, and we were talking about, this is, th think of this student right here that we wanna do. And um, one of my teachers, kindergarten teacher, she shared that um, she had a, an experience with doing this very thing and talking with them. And she said, it wasn't until this that I was able to get the get the parents involved on the campus and we talked about what that was what it was that she actually did and that's when the light bulb came off um, that it was you know bridging that gap by getting the parents involved that's when that student started actually learning that's when that student started engaging in the classroom is once they got the parents involved so we said what helps get the parents involved and we started that's what helped us get there and it was that's where we that's actually the conversation that led to start talking about the culturally responsive classroom. That's the kind of stuff I like to hear about. You know, the, the other stuff is good, but, you know, the actual, and plus that you have some awesome kindergarten people up there yes, and some awesome kindergarten kids. So and this, thank you again for coming and reading to them. We appreciate that. So <laughs> that was fun. That yes, was fun. Thank you very much for, uh, uh, were there any other things that you guys want to say very very proud of you guys thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you okay sunrise you've got some uh, level <laughs> levels to make here I hope you have a good story I'll start <laughs> okay so I'm Chris Roy. I'm the principal at sunrise um, it's my fourth year there and so um, the whole process of the school improvement we started um, back with uh, IE in January, how um, Fox Creek and Desert Valley and Bolton Middle School already explained it, and then met in February at Desert Valley with IE again, and then we, the next process was for us to complete our integrated action plan, the action steps piece, and then we had um, a virtual check-in 
with the IE people. They um, did a virtual conference with us for, um, I think we had about just about two hours. And so um, we did some similar things on that Friday before um, the PD, or before spring break, um, our team met about the, our ATSI subgroups, which are the Hispanic Latino, and then the um, low income uh, populations in our school. And so we did the same thing, fish bones. Um, and then the next part that we worked on was the action step. And so um, all of the action steps are based off of those fish bones. And so during that process, you look and see um, what's going on, what do you need to do to improve. And we completed that uh, prior to the meeting with the instructional empowerment. And then when I was on the virtual uh, conference with her, we went through it all and she asked good questions that kind of helped um, hone some hone some things in and narrow it down a little bit and so um, with our plan we started off with um, the um, a vision statement revising our vision statement and um, she helped me look closer at it to make sure it's more of an instructional vision statement so what we want our teachers to be doing instructional wise um, and how it's going to impact everything else and so um, it's kind of the whole that whole process piece of each of the um, integrated action plan has to have the root cause, the primary needs, desired outcomes. Those those goals are written in smart form for impact and process. The impact is what are, what is it going to do um, to help our students improve in the process of how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so in that um, video conference, uh, uh, Lindsay Elliott was ours for Sunrise, and so. We looked through ours, and so our first principle, like I said, was for that uh, vision statement. So we had, so she was like, make sure we have a strong vision statement that then will help us guide our teachers into our next step of, of um, making sure they hold students to high expectations and themselves as well. And then with all of that, we'll engage the students in the curriculum across a wide variety of disciplines. And so I've d we've done, so it's my, not my first time doing the, the whole process, but this is the first time that um, it kind of snuck up on us that everything really connected well. So we, we've done it in the past where it's like we, we're doing this piece, so we're gonna work on over here for a little bit, oh, and then we have to do this, and we're gonna work on this for a little bit. But this time, it really seems like we're all, it's, everything's aligned well, and so it's like we're gonna be doing things that impact every piece as we go. And so it was, it was a uh, time that was very stressful because it's like, oh my God, how is this gonna work? And then it just kind of, everything started falling into place. And I'm excited about it this year because every piece really does tie into the next. And so I'm, I'm excited for um, what outcomes we can have. Um, and then as Mr. Bolin said, we put everything into the grants management piece. Um, and then we find out that maybe you missed some stuff and, <laughs> and, and you get an email and I check it and, there's scrolling pages of errors, but there will be quick errors to fix. Um, and so with this piece, um, we, at my school, we meet monthly um, to go over our current uh, plan. And so uh, the, the team looks and says, how are we doing on, on one, of, one of the action steps we're working on? Um, do we need to send some more attention to it? How's it going? Uh, one of the goals that we had for this year was to improve um, parent, in, parent involvement in our school. And uh, prior last year, our literacy night, we had like 40-ish, 45 parents come. And so this year's literacy night, um, it was a um, glow party literacy night. And I don't know if that, what exactly happened, we had 280 people come. And so um, it was insane. <laughs> so that's a 500% increase, and our goal was like 25%. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> we're at parties. No. Um, but so the kids were excited. They had great activities. Parents um, were on campus. And it, we want them to be on campus for um, events so they get that positive feeling for the school because some parents didn't have that great experience in school, and so they are standoffish. So anything we can do to get parents on campus in a positive light, that's what we're going for. And so the whole process wraps together to have fallen through. Okay. Yeah.
What was your eureka mo moment? It j just the just the after um, that talking through and having everything like go roadmap like ting 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 like everything connected and I was like I could not have I could not have planned this to happen because in the past it's kind of been piecemeal of, of we're working on this area and this area and we're everything kind of sort of align. Um, oops. And it's the first time that I wasn't in part of, in part of each group. So I was like the whole time and so at this time I was like part for a little bit and a little bit and the fact that it all aligned together I was like <laughs> that's amazing. So. Those are good. That's good story. That's yeah. good story. Thank you so much right. for all your work. You guys, you. you guys have Thank done phenomenal. <laughs> do I have a motion? Oh, Madam President, before you do that, um, I'd like to take the opportunity. I know it's not on the agenda, but I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce to you uh, the candidate for uh, principalship at Bullhead City Middle School for next year uh, is Julianne uh, Vela, who is here, and um, uh, she's actually she actually visited the school today. Uh, Miss Cochran. Uh, excitedly invited her and she was part of the <laughs> she was part of uh, she uh, observed their leadership leadership team today leadership team meeting today and uh, in fact has been participating in the interviews for uh, both her assistant principal position and her instructional coach position so um, uh, before we got to the actual agenda I thought you might like to at least put a face with the name thank you Perfect. you want to say something to us you know, you come up here, I want to say, do you have a story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have stories. She has stories. <laughs> but I just, I'm excited to work with the staff and students and families at Bullhead City Middle School, and I look forward to the opportunity. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do I have a mo motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion that we adjourn the workshop. Do I have a second? I second it. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zarzicki. Okay. We are adjourned for about 12 minutes. Yeah, thank you.
I guess it's time to call this meeting to order, so I'll do so. I call this meeting, this regular meeting of Bullhead City School Board on Thursday, April 13th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. <coughs> do we have roll call? Present, Melinda Sabrowski. Charlene Diaz here. Fred Rushton here. Barbara Zarzicki here. May I have everybody rise and say the pledge with me? That's why I didn't sit down. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Don't I have something to read for citizens' presence? Uh, oh, that's called. There is a citizens' presence statement about okay. uh, signing in and um, citizens' president. If you have, will you please sign in and let us know that you are here? Call to the public. This is a time when the public may speak to the governing board 
regarding issues within the jurisdiction of this governing board and subject to reasonable time, space, and manner restrictions as the governing board may establish. See policy BEDH. Comments will be limited to three minutes per individual unless specifically waived by the governing board. At the conclusion of the call to public, individual members of the governing board may respond to criticism made by those who have addressed the board, may ask staff to review the matter, or may ask that the matter be placed on a future agenda. However, the governing board cannot take action on matters that have not been noticed and advanced as part of the agenda. Do we have any citizens that would like to speak to us? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to move on then to the adoption of the agenda. May I have a motion? I make a motion that we adopt the agenda. Um, I, I'll second that. I'd like you, Barb, to revise that to exclude item 5.3. Okay. I make a motion, Barb, I, Barbara Zizinki, make a motion we adopt the agenda excluding item 5.3. And I'll second that amendment. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sebraski. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Aye, Fred Rushton. Aye, Barbara Zarzicki. Donations, do we have, can you bring that up so I can? <clears throat> Colorado River Council donated a check to, F, for, to Fox Creek Vector Program at about at, uh, $1,500. Sunrise, $100 uh, from the Lions Club. River Valley Artist Guild donated $600 at, at Bullhead Middle School. These are phenomenal. It's lots of money, lots of good things happening for our kids. I wish that we could thank you personally, but we'll have to do it from here. Um, superintendent's report, what have you got for us? Okay. Um, you have all the written reports, mm -hmm. and I'll answer, try to answer questions if I can for those. Uh, I did try to remember this time to give you the, uh, both the uh, project tracker, and it was nice to see some of those uh, lines move on the project tracker, uh, and the facilities report. Um, so our facilities people have been really busy. Uh, and you have budget reports uh, and those things. So for miscellaneous updates, I have a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is this weekend, uh, is the Duck Derby, uh, and that's a fundraiser for, um, uh, for River Fund. And um, we're really proud to, uh, because Lance is on uh, the committee and represents our district with River, uh, River Fund, we are um, included on the flyers as a sponsor. So, you know, that's a really nice thing for our district. Of course, it doesn't cost us anything. We haven't put out any money. But the thing is, we benefit, our kids benefit, our families all benefit from, uh, from River Fund, and our employees participate in River Fund. Uh, but I think maybe that's the first time we've had been able to be uh, claimed as a, as a sponsor. So that's kind of fun. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to give you just a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a little update on uh, the progress with uh, our daycare study uh, that we're doing. Uh, I did a, a questionnaire this week to our employees, and uh, 100, as of uh, about noon today, 123 responded. Uh, we actually have um, uh, employees who say they have seven infants. Uh, that they would be interested in placing in our um, uh, daycare if we get it going. Three in the age group one to two, and 11 in the age group three to four. So uh, that's 21. It's, you know, that's mm -hmm. 21 kids yeah. uh, that the parents are really interested in us having the daycare. <clears throat> we are currently already uh, licensed for the three to five-year-old age group. And uh, we're licensed for 85 students in that age group right now. The only thing we would need to do for that is increase our license number. Um, so easy, easy kind of thing. Um, Tammy Alvarez contacted uh, the, con the, the representative at DHS that works with us on, on the daycare license part of this whole process. <coughs> Excuse me, to invite her uh, or another representative to come 
look at the rooms that we have in mind for this program. They are just overwhelmed right now, so they can't come right now. Uh, so we're going to be sending them some photos and uh, asking for some input from them. But we think we have three appropriate classrooms uh, on the Coyote campus down uh, just across the sidewalk from where we have the preschool. And we're aware of some of the things that we need to do. We also checked with the trust, uh, Arizona Risk Retention Trust, to make sure that we would be able to get uh, liability insurance. And um, <clears throat> Cass has been on the phone with our rep uh, there. Um, she asked a lot of really good questions, and she's presenting the information to their underwriters. So um, we think there's a pretty good chance that that'll, that will uh, be available as well. So we're moving, um, uh, moving forward with that project. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The other thing I wanted to uh, share with you um, as an update right now, because I'll be coming back to you m next month with uh, requests for some approvals, um, our capital outlay uh, uh, budget right now, or it started the year with $1.576 million. Uh, we have expended or encumbered $1.089 million, which leaves $486,000. Um, a good bit of that, I'm, I'm guessing about half of that, uh, we're going to need to complete the playground for the life skills students over at Desert Valley. So we have the equipment. We have a lot of equipment. <laughs> Probably, what, $400,000 worth of equipment? $300,000, $400,000 worth of equipment? No, well, it's a lot. It's a lot. We have a lot of equipment, and it's over there. Uh, but part of that process was not installation. It was just getting the equipment, and the grants have paid for the equipment. Um, so we will need to pay somebody to install it. And then, of course, we really want that soft surface. So um, uh, I'm guessing probably in the neighborhood of 200000 to get all of that done and get that ready for sc before school starts uh, the last of, of July. Um, so I'll have more detail about that, but I kind of wanted to give you an idea. We have done amazing amazing projects and uh, you keep hearing about sewers from me uh, but we're really happy that we have internal people to do a lot of that we outsource it when we have to but as much as possible our internal people are doing it and so a couple of the recent projects that if we'd had to outsource them uh, that would have cost us over ten thousand dollars we could do for two so um, uh, you know, so we're we're seeing savings for the things that we can do, and then uh, uh, then that you know then that makes it so it's not quite as painful to have to pay outside people to do the things that our folks don't either have the equipment for or the expertise, uh, and we'll just keep working on those projects as we go along. So uh, next month I'll try to have a pretty detailed list for you of the of uh, some of the projects that aren't even on necessarily on the project tracker. So if you have questions, I'll try to answer those. I just, I want to give you and your staff a compliment. Um, the discipline yes. paper coming off the, offline. Uh, Cassie, can you bring that up so people can see? The cumulative report, I think. Yeah, Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Is continuing to decrease. Did you guys notice this? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. somebody is doing something right somewhere and they need mm -hmm. a big pat on the back. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that the board can do to help conti make this continue? I will ask them when we meet again to see if okay. there are things, but if there's um, anything special um, that they need um, or programs that they need or something like that that we might have access to or can get from the community. I'll share It'd with them. Really, really nice. Okay. I noticed that when I did this report that mm -hmm. we had that little spike, mm -hmm. um, but and uh, but then it's continuing to, to continuing to progress. And uh, I think it's just a, a real commitment to uh, that they all have. Uh, mm -hmm. The word relationship is a really used word in our district. It's used by our leadership. It's used by our teachers. Um, a whole lot of of um, uh, having good behavior has to do with building relationships with kids. And, um, and they're all really committed to doing that. So um, uh, kudos to them. I agree with you. I'm, I'm very pleased when I see, uh, see these things happening and getting better all the time. And it's building culture. You know, when you establish relationships, you build culture. Yeah, yeah it's great to see that, Don. We're trending on every one of them and stuff. Yeah. 
It really is. Yeah, it is. It's, you know. And thank you for noting it. Um, uh, we all like to be appreciated when, or no, at least noticed when we're, uh, when our efforts are beginning to pay off. Yeah, when you go from almost 200 in October down at, the, I'm looking just like at Fox Creek, you know, being junior high, I always go to junior high first, of course, but going from almost 200, you know, there in October, and we're down to 79 now, so, you know, that's a 75% decrease, that's fantastic. I will tell you that we have uh, we have four students at Fox Creek who are in the diversion program that you approved a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Mr. Eastman reported to me uh, yesterday or today um, that he has been sitting in on the Tuesday evening training sessions that those students are required to participate in. He said they are really, really well done. It's not somebody sitting there and talking at the kids and telling them what they should be doing. It's interactive. There are conversations. There's role playing. Um, a lot of good things that have to do with decision making, and then the first session that will in, uh, that will require parents to participate is not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. And um, uh, so I'm really happy to see that uh, some families have chosen mm -hmm. uh, to take a different approach and uh, to help their kids. Good, great. Thank you. Any other questions for our superintendent? Okay. Any board member updates? Anything you guys have been doing specially? I know that I got to read the kindergarten kids. That was way too much fun. Oh, I got to uh, teach the junior high kids how to decorate cupcakes for Easter. Oh yeah, how did yeah. That go? We did that. It was it was a lot of fun. They had a lot. They had a lot of fun, and uh, they. I've got pictures of it, and the kids got in there and made made them and they uh, had a couple little girls come up and say it's the first time I've ever decorated a cupcake in my life and they were just all real proud of it and they had a real good time and tomorrow I get to go over and teach them how to make Chinese chili cheese dogs. Can I audit that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have 48 kids learn how to make Chinese chili cheese dogs tomorrow. <laughs> wow. It would it would be nice um, if other principals would uh, keep us working, you know, because mm -hmm. when we're in the schools, we, are, mm -hmm. you know, stories are so important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so much easier for me to go out when somebody says something rah, 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 about bad about the school, and I say, no, no, yeah. listen, this is what I just got finished doing. You need <laughs> to come in and be with these kindergarten kids because they are super humdinger. You know, it's so much nicer to have that kind of thing, but it, it comes from personal experience, so it would be mm -hmm. really nice if, if the schools would ask, you know, mm -hmm. for just an hour mm -hmm. you know, of our time. And it gets us in and it gets us, the, the staff knows who we are mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, so I would recommend that. And I always get a big laugh when I'm over there because Mr. Osuna always comes through to see what I'm doing and stuff in the class. And he'll look and go, I remember when I did that in your class in junior high. <laughs> and, stuff. and the kids will look and go, you had Mr. Osuna in junior high? And I'll go, mm-hmm. <laughs> see, we've got stories, too. Yeah, we got stories, too. <laughs> okay. Um, may I have a, a motion to adopt the consent agenda? I'll make a motion that we adopt the consent agenda as presented. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye, Melinda Sabraski. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Aye, Fred Rushton. Aye, Barbara Zarzicki. <sighs> Old business, 4.1. Policy, JICJ, student use of digital communication and electric devices, electronic devices. This is our second reading. <coughs> and I will tell you that Cass and I realized this evening that uh, she didn't put on there that uh, the, uh, she put it on as a discussion item. But I think that's okay because you all had asked that I take it back to the administrative team, the leadership team. <laughs> and so you will see in blue uh, the uh, recommended additions that the leadership team had, uh, good ones, good mm -hmm. additions. And so, actually, you can do the second reading, uh, a third reading at the next board meeting and approve it yeah. officially. Um, uh, so, uh, but if you have questions or comments, that's mm -hmm. a good thing, too. Did the administrators like it? Yes, they did. 
And I thought, and, and their additions were, they were kind of the ones like, oh yeah, why didn't we think of those? But mm-hmm. um, very good because they were, you know, they were processing and, and thinking about certain circumstances and, uh, and how to use this in those circumstances. So that's what made them think of these additions. Okay. But Very yes, good. they do like it. And they like, I mean, many, much of it is procedures we've been doing, but it, they've not been backed by policy. Right. So they really liked the idea that we would have a policy right. to back it up. Good. Okay. We'll consider that for next next board meeting. Item 4.2, revised stipend for special ed teachers. Okay. So this is the item that mm-hmm. uh, ended up being attached improperly to 5.3 that I ask you all to remove for tonight. This w- you all approved this last, uh, last month uh, uh, for uh, teachers to, special ed teachers to do the paperwork. Uh, I have to tell you, I went away thinking about it. I was aware of all of these things. I had mm-hmm. read it multiple times. Uh, but the more I thought about it and the more I recognized that uh, this is part of their job. Now, it is a, an incredible amount of paperwork that is above and beyond what mm-hmm all of the incredible paperwork that most teachers do. Um, but to me, it is, it, it's part of the job. And so I don't have a problem with us compensating special ed teachers for this incredible amount of paperwork. But to me, there's no reason for it to be, oh, you can only, you, you get paid if you only do half. Miss mm-hmm. Hall is facing the, not the guillotine, but certainly the the feedback from the ADE oh special. <laughs> it feels yeah. like the guillotine. Yeah, uh, facing the the feedback from the ADE special ed department for records that we have that are out of compliance, and so to me, our records need to be 100% in compliance. And uh, so I'm recommending a revision to what was a, what was approved last month. That if you do it, you get recognized for that you get some comp- additional compensation mm-hmm. if you don't you, there's none so uh, i'm recommending it's all or nothing mm-hmm. and actually i think that's yeah yeah after i yeah. read this i'm going oh yeah duh because yes yeah. i mean these are federal forms that do need to go up to ade and and they've got to be correct mm-hmm. and we lo- and we it, lose support for yeah. the programs for our special needs students mm-hmm. if we are out of compliance right. mm-hmm. for too long. Mm-hmm. You know, that, yeah. there's not mm-hmm. much wiggle room. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and these mm-hmm. programs are programs that are high, high price programs for kids who mm-hmm. really need those additional services. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we're hurting our kids. Yeah. We hurt our kids if we don't do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, uh, and, and I just think that uh, that's what all of us need to do. We need mm-hmm. to do our jobs. Mm-hmm. And a teacher who is not clean 100% of the paperwork that is assigned to them to do, they're not doing their job. Right. So they should not be compensated at all for mm-hmm. doing a partial job. I mean, that would be like you know going in and saying, okay, I'm going to teach half the kids today, and the rest of the time I'll just let kids sit and do nothing in the classroom when you're a classroom teacher. That it should be the 100% because this is part of their responsibility of their job. Yeah. I take my car into the mechanic to be worked on, and I expect it to be (laughs) fixed 100%, you know, and and the mechanic expects 100% pay. Mm -hmm. And if they only fix it 50%, that mechanic still expects 100% pay. Well, I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm not doing that uh, because I want my car fixed 100%. So, you know, that's not the best best example, but it's one that most of us can understand. Mm -hmm. You need a motion? I do. Do I have a motion to uh, approve this revised stipend? I'll make a motion that we um, revise the stipend for special ed teachers as presented. Is there a second? I second it. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zarzicki. We are at item 5.1. Um, I would like to take this time to recommend a replacement for Amanda Amen. Okay. Um, Dr. Uh, Sheila Burnett is here in, 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 our, in the room. I asked okay. her to come tonight so that she might, you might ask her questions or talk to her. Um, 
She is part of the leadership class in for Women's Council and is phenomenal. I know that she's mm -hmm. very involved <laughs> in, in Kiwanis, the, uh, the noon Kiwanis, right? I think you're president, aren't you? Vice governor of the district. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> she's way up there. Um, and she's doing a whole bunch of other things in town. Um, I would like to recommend her for recommend that we recommend her to Mike File. I mean, that's a lot of recommending um, for placement on the board as soon as possible. Sheila, would you like to come up and address us? Um, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask her. Well, I am a, uh, was a single mom of four kids and they were in, three of them in successive grades. They were all known as the Sanders kids. <laughs> sometimes the teacher thought, well, I taught you last year. And he's like, no, that's my brother. <laughs> so I was very involved in our school back in New York, but we only had 1,200 kids from kindergarten to 12th grade. So it was kind of easy to be a little bit more involved. Um, but I really think I could add a lot to the school board here just from the experience I've had with that. But I also have taught dental hygiene and some other things um, in the area as well so okay. anybody have any questions I mean you're not no. going to drill her no I've worked <laughs> I've worked I've worked with Sheila with women's council so I know what it, when she's given a job she does it very well <laughs> okay. well thank you well, thank, thank you, you. Um, I need a motion to recommend she, Dr. Sheila Barnett to Mike File so that he might put her on our board. I make a motion that we recommend Dr. Sheila Barnett to Mike File to replace Amanda on our board. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabraski. I Charlene Diaz. I Fred Rushton. I Barbara Sarzicki. Okay. Thank you, Sheila, for coming to me. Thank you. Item 5.2, policy we'll regulation. <laughs> Did you just say congratulations to her? I said we'll see her in May. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 5.2, policy regulation GCBD-R, professional and support staff fringe benefits. Madam President and board members, um, <clears throat> the HR coordinator, um, uh, pointed out to me that our practice for uh, quite, a, quite a while has been actually to begin uh, uh, insurance coverage uh, the next month after we hire an employee as opposed to waiting until they finish their probation. Um, and uh, so I'm making the recommendation that we make the policy match our practice uh, for this reason. We're continuously looking at the practices and procedures we're using and uh, uh, evaluating how they impact our recruitment and retention. And um, so this is a pretty easy way uh, to change something that will help us recruit, but also if, if we hire a good employee and they uh, get offered a job someplace else, that maybe doesn't have insurance, um, the fact that we are offering that insurance immediately might make the difference in us keeping them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, sometimes it's the little bitty things that make a big difference. So that's, that's the reason that I'm recommending that we change the, the, re the uh, regulation to match our practice. But this is our current practice. We're just changing the yes, words. Yes, we're the changing the words. Any questions? <coughs> Do I have a motion to adopt this? I'll make a motion that we adopt. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Um, policy regulation GCBD-R, professional support staff fringe benefits. As modified? As okay. Go yes. ahead. Come on. As presented. <coughs> okay. I'll Do second I that. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabraski. I Charlene Diaz. I Fred Rushton. I Barb Zarzicki. Um, 5.3 was pulled, so we're not discussing that tonight. 
5.4, <coughs> English language learner teacher position. Madam President and board members, um, uh, you've heard from all, all five of our schools relative to their improvement plans and their uh, action plans for next year. And um, you may not remember, but the subgroups, the subgroup for EL students uh, uh, appears in those plans, in several of those plans. Mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, this past year, the current year, we uh, used grant funding uh, to add uh, a, an EL position, teaching position at both uh, Diamondback and Sunrise, using some grant funding to do that. Um, we seriously need to have similar instruction, uh, very designated and very intentional instruction at both the middle school and the junior high. So I'm recommending that we add a position that would be 50%, you know, 5.5 at each of those sites uh, for next year. Is there a possibility of putting a teacher at each, at each site? Rather than Are splitting? we doing this in, a, in the grant, Jen? We're not doing this, no, this is out of M&O. Uh, I can take a look at that. Uh, it might be possible since we had the great news last Friday that our uh, safety grant proposal that um, uh, gives us four of our counselors and our SRO has been approved for the next three years. So uh, as you know, we had talked about early on, or at least a month ago, uh, about uh, the fact that I was building those into the budget for next year on the outside chance that we would not get that grant. So it's possible that I could do that. In fact, I, I've been working on that budget. So if, if that's what you all recommend, I make it work. I just think that splitting yeah. a teacher is, requires it's travel time. Mm -hmm. It requires, there's a lot of downtime where if we have somebody there mm -hmm. uh, at 100% so that the, the administrator can. I can tell you with experience mm -hmm. that <laughs> I, we, I think we all can. It's extremely difficult yeah. um, to, um, split your time between two different schools yeah so yeah i i agree i can if make we it work can, if we can, if we can af mm -hmm. afford it let's do one at each school okay. site yeah. do you want us to approve this with that amendment yes if you okay. yes absolutely okay would you somebody make a motion for the english language learner teacher position at both schools I make a motion that we add an English learner teacher's position at Bullhead Middle School and Fox Creek Junior High for the uh, school year 2023-24. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I'm Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zarzicki. <coughs> motion passes. 5.5, .5, job descriptions. I see one, one principal dancing in the audience, and I suspect the other one is watching <laughs> online and dancing at home, so, uh, <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, uh, okay, these job descriptions, um, I had started revising job descriptions a year ago, had, had, we had gone through a lot of them, uh, but because we have some of these positions open, uh, we thought we'd better update them, and then I have a couple of changes. So uh, the job descriptions for counselor, speech language therapist, speech language pathology assistant um, are revisions of previous uh, job descriptions that we've had in the district. The job description for the instructional coach for student achievement uh, is similar to the job description for the other instructional coaches, but focuses very heavily on the things that we want done with this, i.e. coaching our teachers for um, uh, differentiation in the classrooms for special ed students, EL students, gifted students. Um, and so it, it has some variations. Uh, the English language uh, development coordinator and hearing officer. Um, you've approved uh, Amanda Amen for that position. The, um, in the past, we had three separate job descriptions that uh, Mr. Newsel worked under, one for the hearing officer, one for the EL development uh, position, and one for the teacher for the NAU Grow Your Own Teacher program. Um, it's likely that that piece will come back, but NAU has to have some say in that. But I didn't see any reason in having separate job <coughs> descriptions. So this one is a combined job description for the position as it is right now. 
and then the other two uh, just to be consistent with what we how we rank uh, positions one and two with our with technology and with a couple of other places this is just flipping the one and the two the job descriptions have not changed it's just the designation on those two so uh, I would recommend that you approve all of these job descriptions we've all had a chance to read these descriptions mm -hmm. are they appropriate mm -hmm. Okay, may I have a motion then to approve these, these job descriptions? <clears throat> I move to approve all of these job descriptions as presented. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I, Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zarzicki. Um, item 5.7, revision of positions, transportation. Number six. Five, five, six. six. Five, six. Five, six. Oh, six, did I, <laughs> she didn't highlight it. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> the math teacher Demerits. that can't count. Demerits. No, she didn't highlight it in pink. See, uh -huh. everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry. It's been a long day, and I'm kind of going off the deep end here. 5.6, retroactive approval of pay overtime to, to facilities and co custodial crews for moving furniture on the weekends to assist for floor work. Madam President and board members, I, I put a pretty lengthy uh, description in there mm -hmm. for the public as uh -huh. well. Um, ordinarily, when we have folks work overtime, we do comp time. Mm -hmm. There is so much work to be done with, move with moving furniture out and in for these floor projects. There's no way in the world anybody would, make, uh, would be able to use their comp time between now and June 30th. Um, and uh, it's a heck of a lot of work, and we're really pleased that our employees are willing to come in and work on a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, to make this work so uh, uh, I'm recommending that we actually pay the overtime for time over 40 hours uh, for when our uh, facilities and custodial people work yeah. on flooring mm -hmm. yeah or well for the flooring project yeah. they're not doing the floors but for the flooring projects yeah. that's more than fair mm -hmm. I think it's yeah way yeah. more than fair um, do I have a motion to approve this I so move are officially <laughs> <laughs> I move that we uh, grant retroactive approval to pay overtime to the facilities and custodial crews for moving furniture on the weekends to assist in the flooring work project do I have a second I'll second that motion all those in favor I Melinda Sabraski I Charlene Diaz I Fred Rushton I Barbara Zarzicki and Madam President, if I might just add a footnote to that, this the moving of the furniture would have to happen. And um, uh, other than doing this, we would have to hire somebody outside to do it. So my thought process is I'd rather keep the money in, mm -hmm. in uh, with our employees than somebody on the yeah, outside. Yeah, we want to benefit our employees more before That's we right. benefit the outside. That's right. I thought Fred was going to do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did, didn't you hear Fred volunteer at the last meeting? I, I could have sworn he did. He said, come over and do If I course. volunteered, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was after you left we volunteered you. That's what it was. <laughs> That's like being voluntold. Yeah, right? yes. you got exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Item 5.7, Revision of Positions, Transportation Assistant Director and Transportation Secretary 2. Uh, Madam President and Board Members, uh, this year the Assistant Director has been a half-time position, and um, I'm recommending that we move that back to a full-time position. Uh, we had approved for this current year a, a second secretary uh, because our transportation department operates from about 5.30 in the morning until 6.30 in the evening. And so we needed that coverage. But what we determined this year is that we did not need two full-time secretarial positions. So uh, what we need, we have the full-time secretarial position and then we just need a little overlap and somebody to stay late. So uh, I'm recommending that that position uh, move back to a .75, which is six hours a day, um, uh, and only be uh, on the days that we actually are transporting students. So it's a it's a part-time job. I have a question on this one. Are 
Are we still involved with the high school? Do we still have a... Yes, we have an IGA. IGA. I'm hopeful that we will have IGAs ready to present to the board next month. Um, uh, we, uh, part of the IGA is that we share a director and we share the assistant director. Um, and so um, some, of what the, some of what the assistant director uh, does, we had thought we would be able to have the second secretary do. Um, and that just it just didn't work out and uh, and so we've really that <clears throat> position has not been filled this year and so it's put a big strain on uh, the full-time secretary that we have but it's also put a real strain on uh, the director the full-time director because somebody has to be around uh, all of those 13 hours that the transportation department is in operation most days. And so uh, not only has he had to drive bus, he's, uh, he's also had to hang out, you know, be, be there at the end of the day. So uh, we think this will relieve him some. It will, uh, it will uh, you know, they can, the director and the assistant director stagger their times already. Um, but then having this, the clerical person who can just be available uh, will, will relieve the directors. Uh, you know, so they're not always having to stay until 6.30 or 7. So some evaluation of data led us to this. Speaking of data, did you guys know that our buses have traveled 150,000 miles a year to, since the start of school? Yes, Already this year. Yeah. I need a motion to approve this, uh, this item. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the revision of positions for Transportation Assistant Director and Transportation Secretary 2. Is there a second? I second it. All those in favor? I, Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barb Zarzicki. Item 5.8, Memor Memorandum of Understanding with Tri-State Wi-Fi. Madam President and Board Members, we're always looking for partners. Um, in the in the community folks that will uh, kind of do in-kind things so things that help them and things that help us uh, tri-state Wi-Fi uh, is a, a local company mm -hmm. and they approached uh, mr. McNutt about uh, the possibility of putting uh, some of their um, towers on some of our buildings um, and uh, that led to a, a discussion um, uh, for us the benefit is that uh, if our current um, uh, fiber system, network system, were to fail for some reason, we would have immediate backup. And so they would set up from there, because they're doing Wi-Fi, so, you know, that's the air. We're not depending on something underground. Um, uh, so they would set up for us a separate network in their system, not connected to any of the things that they use to earn money, none of that. It would just be our own system, and it's there for backup. As you know, in this community with all of our hills and valleys, mm -hmm. sometimes it's difficult to get connections, uh, either Wi-Fi or uh, any of those kinds of things. So we benefit by having a backup system, and they benefit by being able to complete their circle uh, for their Wi-Fi uh, customers. Um, so it's a pretty even trade for us. Uh, the only, uh, you can see the whole agreement. Uh, we, would, we would set it up so they had access to the, their equipment when they needed to, um, and um, uh, we would have the services we needed if we needed them. I have a question, Dr. Stewart, if mm -hmm. I may. <clears throat> will their employees that uh, gain access to our grounds, will they have to go through the same security clearances and others that outside vendors have to comply with? Hadn't thought about that, but uh, uh, we hadn't talked about that. Uh, they're likely to only be on our campuses not during business hours, although that could happen, I guess. Um, and we would give them uh, we would give them access to just the specific place that they have their equipment. Uh, so we would restrict how they get on campus, where they get on campus, and how they get to their equipment. So having said that, that doesn't mean that they couldn't potentially be elsewhere on campus. Um, so I will look into that, and we will discuss uh, the security pieces of that. That's okay, a very so good question. There, there will be some oversight there. They won't just mm -hmm. be allowed free reign. No, not at all. Okay, cool. Um, any keys that they would need would only get them to the place that they need to go. 
So in other words, no master keys, none of that kind of thing, just access to where their towers are. I need a motion for the memorandum of understanding <coughs> with Tri-State Wi-Fi. I make a motion that we accept the memorandum of understanding with Tri-State Wi-Fi. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I'm Charlene Diaz. I'm Fred Rushton. I'm Barb Zarzicki. Item 5.9, uh, fiscal year FY, is that fiscal, fiscal year? Fiscal year, yes, Fiscal year 22 audit report. We've all had a chance to kind of read through this. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was, <laughs> yeah. I was kind of impressed that uh, it seems like the number of audit items are down this year, right? Sort of the like recommendations, the record. recommendations for us mm -hmm. to fix things, um, uh, are about half of what we've had the last um, uh, since I've been here. So uh, that was kind of exciting to me, and and some of the items that are there. Um, uh, are much, much less, uh, much fewer things to fix. Uh, so the example I'll give is the coding error. So there was one error in in 81 codes that they pulled at random. Um, we've all we've been learning. Jen and I've been learning codes for the last four years, and uh, and working with Heinfeld Meach to train. You know, and I call the Auditor General's office and talk with my contact there uh, if we have something that. Um, you know, that I go, okay, I, we've not coded this kind of thing before. I'll make a guess at it, and then I'll give him a call and say, okay, this is, this is my best guess from the USFR. Well, you know, what, what is it? So uh, the fact that we're learning and we're not just automatically using past ones, we're, we're checking all of them to make sure. So I'm, I'm kind of pleased about that. Um, and all of the things on that list have already been addressed. Not all of them have been completely fixed, uh, but they've all been addressed, and we will have them fixed. So, okay. I need a motion to approve. Well, are there any other comments? I should, should ask you guys. Um, I need a motion to approve the um, fiscal year 22 audit report. I'll make a motion that we approve the fiscal year 22 audit report as presented. All those I second it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your turn? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Sarzicki. Item 5.10, 5.1, 5.10. Um, we're going zero. to at this time convene into executive session. Oh, well, I'd like a motion to for discussion or consideration of employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, demotion, dismissal, salaries, disciplining, or resigning of a public officer, appointee, or employee of any public body, except that, with the exception of salary discussions, an officer, appointee, and or employee may demand that the discussion or consideration occur in public meeting. Um, I need a motion to convene to executive session. I make a motion we convene to the executive session. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barb Zarzicki. We're now in executive session.
I need a motion to reconvene into public session. I will make a motion, Madam President, to reconvene into public session. I'll second that motion. All in favor, aye, Melinda Sabrowski. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Aye, Fred Rushton. Aye, Barb Sarzicki. Does someone have a motion about uh, uh, our superintendent and a contract? I make a motion that we offer Dr. Stewart a one-year contract for the school year 2023-24 in the amount of $104,000. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabrowski. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Do we need discussion? Oh, no. I the Castle was going to say that. Was, did we need to? <laughs> okay. No, I was counting. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Zar I Barbara Zarzicki. We are now in 8.1. Um, this is future topics. Basically, after taking a class in um, school financing in school finance online and then going to rural doing a rural schools thing I was unsure about a strategic plan now dr. Stewart has assured me that there is one <laughs> <laughs> but I think that we need to be a little more involved in it so I would like to suggest that we have a retreat um, June 1st from 10.30 to about 3.30, okay. where we discuss uh, our strategic plan for the district so that we are all on the same page and we all know what's going on and that kind of stuff. Um, so Madam, we Madam, yes, we certainly can. Madam President, um, uh, I, am I assuming correctly or incorrectly that this should involve our leadership team and some other uh, some other folks that's where I was going okay but okay. thank you it, it, would Sorry. Involve, it would involve the leadership team and um, some community members that you may choose and I will choose a couple and if the board mem each of the board members would like to uh, at least submit a name or two that would like to be on this committee and it would be Basically, it's going to work with um, academics, discipline, community involvement, what were facilities. The facilities and um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. I'm thinking too. about the, I'm thinking about the spreadsheet in my mind. But there, there's a there's several items that are on that, and each one of them has a strategic plan. But we need to be able to put those in writing. Um, so if you guys would mark your calendars for June mm -hmm. 1st. Uh, from three thir from ten thirty to three thirty. And where would this be? Right, right here. here. Right here. Um, the other thing is, I have this note from the board secretary. We remember we asked ASBA, or we were given a choice of mm -hmm. ASBA things uh, training. I'm th I'm thinking that if we put this retreat in, we really just need to drop one of those trainings. But the training that I'm really most interested in is using the new superintendent tool, the, the evaluation tool, and learning how to use that so that we're more successful, we can give better guidance. Um, so we need a date for that. Cass says that you need to have a couple of dates so that they, ha oops, sorry, so that they have, uh, you know, so that they can try to help coordinate with you. So we're kind of into the month of June with that cast with that video. I'm the only one that uses hard copy. <laughs> Everybody else up here has got their phones out. God, cry me. I don't even know where my phone is. Um, Not turned on. You that. don't answer it anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got that one. Right? <laughs> I don't answer it anyway. Yeah, I know. She I, turns it off and then forgets to turn it back on. And it's like, well, is she okay? Do I need to go on over and check on her? <laughs> um, what, are, what time frame are we looking at? 
it's like June, an all day June, type of thing. I, it's only an hour. I think that this. Oh, it's got to be more than an hour. It's yeah. two hours. Oh, I, it has to be it's more than an hours. hour. This yeah, is a long hours. document, y'all. It's two hours. It's okay, two hours. so it's a two-hour yeah. thing. Um, Are you looking at June or? I'm looking at June. Okay. How about June eight? That's uh, a board no, meeting we will be day. in Flagstaff. Board meeting day. We will yeah. be in Flagstaff, Melinda. Then I guess I it will be in Flagstaff for ASBA. Oh, that's right. That's then I right. guess it won't be a board meeting. Day. And we have a <laughs> board meeting that day too. Oh, yeah. yeah I guess not right. if you're gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's that. Is that a, is that another bolts or is it a yeah it's a bolts it's, a bolts. it's bolts yeah it's the leadership conference that's good oh so we need I got free did you get that yes okay she so won a, stayed on she won a free. Gotten free um I missed out <laughs> <laughs> so another day I was teaching um well. You know, I don't have anything specific, so you want to pick a day the following week? The 22nd or the 15th? 15th? At what time? Nine, nine o'clock? Mm -hmm. Are they coming in person? Kathy, do They're they come in, in the mornings or the afternoons? That's or? why I need two dates so that they can decide. So you okay, can so we can give you two dates. So we can give the 15th and the 22nd. Okay. okay. What two times? Um, how about nine in the morning and one in the afternoon? Mm. No? I like nine in the morning, okay, but. Well, we've we got to give them, 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 give them a choice. we got to give them. Oh, I thought we were giving them two. Okay. Well, you could give them 9 a.m. for both options. days. Just, mm -hmm. You could give them 9 a.m. for both days, probably. I believe it's two options. Both oh, two yeah, options for both Two options yeah, for morning and So Oh, a morning option I'll and an Say afternoon. 9 and 1, then there you, you can do that. Yeah. That's, what, yeah, that's yeah. what I kind of said. Okay, on either the 15th or the 21st. 22nd. 22nd. Okay, got it. Fred, was that a problem? No, I'll work around it. <laughs> That's his nap <laughs> retirement <time>. schedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is nap time. Okay, Cassie, is there anything else we need to do for you? No, thank you. <laughs> okay, date and time for the future meeting, uh, May 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same time, James Channel, 530 for our workshop. Do we have another school coming in? So no, nope, but you've had all of the schools for those plans. And okay. uh, so if you wanted to go back to 6 o'clock, I think you could probably go back to 6 for your meeting. Well, that's At right. this point, that's I don't know any other. Uh, no I mean, workshops. You know, we'll have, we'll have, you know, we'll have workshop stuff from yeah. 530, but I don't know that we'll need more than 30 minutes. Okay. okay. How about 6 p.m. then on the, the 11th and 630 Oh, you want 6 and 6.30 or 5.30 and 6? Let's six? go 6. Let's just go to a regular. 5.30 and 6? 5.30 yeah. and 6. Okay. May 11th. Um, looking forward to May. Uh, junior high promotion. Mm -hmm. Do you know oh, what yeah. day that's on? It's on, on your uh, oh, calendar. Oh, I just looked it up. It's May. It's on your calendar that... Um, May 23rd. May 23rd. May 23rd. Okay. Are, are we being asked to be there to be... Yes, please. <coughs> they would love to have you on the, on the stage. Okay. Yeah. What time is it? 9.30 is when it on starts. May 23rd, right? Okay, May 23rd at 9.30. We need to be there about nine. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I put down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's at the Anderson. Anderson Fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and I will say that um, for what it's worth, uh, fairly soon after it's over, I'm hitting the road because uh, my grandson graduates so. that ah, you evening. From so from from high school. So I'll be heading to Gilbert. So. Wow. 
Oh, I remember when he was little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Any other th things that we need to know about? What time was that? Day? Nine o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. At what day? We need a motion May to 23rd. adjourn, please. May 23rd. I'll make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I'm Charlene Diaz. I'm Fred Rushton. You mean we're going to call quits to this fun we're having tonight? <laughs> I'm Barb Zarzicki. Done. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> You're chit chatting.